meet the Stellarator, the future of fusion energy. Power and energy are vital components of our day-to-day -day existence. When you turn on an appliance, such as lamp, you are consuming electricity. You are consuming energy if you are watching this on the internet. It should come as no surprise that seeing a video requires a significant amount of mental and physical effort. Because of this, we are now living in a world that requires an ever-increasing amount of electricity as a result of the large number of people who require power and energy. What's more is that acquiring this kind of power is the challenging part. Therefore, they came up with the concept of utilizing nuclear fusion, which is one of the processes that is most frequently observed in the stars. This is normally how stars acquire their fuel, and the procedure is rather straightforward and relatively swift at least for a big gaseous body like stars. Before we reveal how it works, be sure to like and comment to this video and subscribe to our channel for more. In the context of nuclear fusion, below is a brief explanation of how the transfer of power takes place. Number 1. The relative compositions of two different elements are brought together, and then they are reformed. In a nuclear reaction involving deuterium and tritium, the two elements combine to generate an atom and helium and neutron. Number 2. The neutron's excess mass is turned back into the neutron's kinetic energy in the second step of the process. This is the result that you receive when you plug EMC2 into Einstein's famous equation. In this case, the energy is equal to the mass multiplied by the square of the speed of light. It is estimated that there is approximately one part of deuterium for every 6,000 parts of salt water. Tritium is not as prevalent, although it is not possible to find. On Earth, nuclear fusion is most frequently carried out with these two components, since they are the ones that can be obtained with the least amount of difficulty. In order to take place, nuclear fusion requires temperatures that are moderately high and typically occurs at a level of approximately 100 million Kelvin. This is, of course, a temperature that is not very easy to obtain, especially when considering the possibility of finding it anywhere near the Earth. Plasma is the element that we perceive to normally be this hot, and its creation is also considered one of the more challenging processes. Plasma in Nuclear Fusion The Kamek The First Try When scientists first realized the significance of plasma in the fusion process, one of the first questions that came to mind was whether or not they could incorporate plasma into a machine in such a way that it would cause fusion to take place. This initial machine was referred to as Tukamak. Tukamaks are machine in the shape of donut that enclose plasma within ionized magnetic fields while simultaneously heating it to insanity. This is the interior of an ITER decamac, an explanation for which is accompanied by a more sophisticated diagram. It is possible to keep the plasma contained in one location, while simultaneously utilizing the interior of reactor to produce energy from the fusion reaction. The operation of the decamac may be described as follows. In order to keep the fusion process going, it was necessary to keep particular particles in the plasma near the device core. This was accomplished by making use of Lorentz force that was already experienced by the particles and combining it with a magnetic force. Simply put, this meant that the magnetic and electric forces acting on the particles served to maintain them moving in helical patterns parallel to field lines. In addition to this, it was discovered that the Kamex would benefit immensely from having a spiral loop around the center, which would make it easier for the particles to flow through the device. This is in comparison to having a plain circle. In later versions of the Stellarator, this modification was discovered. In this situation, it would be more useful to loop the particles around the conduit in order to preserve a more uniform field and steady flow of energy. It was essential to do this to guarantee that the plasma would not lose its utility during the operation by becoming less hot. In general, the design of Tukamak is quite straightforward, 
and it also provides a practical source of power. They were developed in Russia in the 1960s with the goal of effectively producing power through fusion, and they have been successful in doing so. However, as was previously said, the tokamaks were not ideal and still required some modifications before they could be deployed more successfully on a wider scale. One of these early modifications was referred to as the Stellarator. Tokamak 2.0 the Stellarator. Recently, in a research facility tucked away in the corner of Germany, scientists have been putting in a lot of effort to investigate whether or not an enhanced version of Tokamak is possible. The Wendell Stein X7 has taken its place as the world's most powerful Stellarator. The Stellarator is theoretically comparable to the Tokamak in that it has the capacity to enclose plasma and produce energy, the latter of which is the primary objective. Tokamaks, on the other hand, are often superior to other types of devices when it comes to retaining the heat with a device which is necessary in order to keep the plasma and, consequently, the reaction going. Stellarators are notoriously challenging to construct and nearly hard to get to a point or they are completely operational after they have been assembled. Stellarators, on the other hand, are far better at keeping the process running and are often less likely to be affected by magnetic disruptions, which can cause the metal to bend around to Camex and cause the process to fail entirely. In addition to this, there is a far higher probability that they will function more effectively when integrated into the larger scheme of being a component of working fusion power plant. Although the WX7 has shown that it is indeed possible to produce, the construction of one currently requires a number of components, all of which contribute to the fact that having one is challenging from both a conceptual and practical standpoint. Container in the shape of vacuum, this permits the magnets which are currently at a temperature of negative 270 degrees Celsius, to go as close as they possible can to the temperature of the plasma, which is 100 million degrees Celsius, without causing either the magnets or the plasma to be destroyed. 20 superconducting flat magnets are utilized in order to facilitate the fine-tuning of the magnetic field. This allows for necessary fine adjustments to be made while also ensuring that the plasma may continue to flow freely. The plasma is held in a winding shape by the superconducting magnets, which ensure that the shape will not deviate from its original state. Additionally, it prevents any particles from leaving the machine. However, the donut shape does prevent a few challenges to deal with. These issues arise as a result of a magnetic field that is stronger closer to the center of the object and weaker closer to its periphery. Because of this, there is a greater possibility that particles will wander from the interior and jump out of line. In order to prevent this from happening, a stellarator is given a twist. This causes the regions that have greater strength to be offset with those that have less strength, causing them to cancel each other out. To sum it up, energy is of the utmost importance in our everyday lives. Fusion is one of the good ways to acquire, in order to produce both light and heat. Stars often use this process. Plasma is required for fusion to take place in Earth. Since the required temperature is not high enough to maintain a steady reaction without it, unless you have access to appropriate resources, accomplishing this will be challenged. The Tokamak is considered to be one of the earliest ideas that featured a method to keep plasma stable. It was initially implemented in the Soviet Russia, where although encountering a number of challenges, it was not deemed as a failure, such as metal bending fluctuation in the magnetic field. Still, further on came the Stellarator, which while conceptually comparable to the Tokama, differed that in feature adaptations, like having a winding path for the plasma to travel, which
which make it less susceptible to fluctuations. In the end, stellarators still have a ways to go before they can be used perfectly in the process of producing energy. But as the findings of science have shown us, we aren't too far behind. What are your thoughts about the future of fusion energy? Do you think that this is possible in the near future? Like this video and share it to your friends. Also, if you're new here and you thought this stuff is pretty interesting, considering subscribing to this channel so we can keep you up with all things amazing. Until the next one.